Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Dimitra's Dishes. We're moving right along with our holiday entertaining menu series and we are up to menu number three. If you have missed menus one and two, that might mean that you're not subscribed to the channel. So take a second and subscribe and hit that little no notification bell so that way you are up to date and you don't miss any of these delicious holiday recipes. You can use all of the menus all holiday season or even anytime you are um, hosting a special dinner party. So today we're moving straight to dessert and for dessert I'm going to teach you how to make my apple pie tureki. Tureki is basically a brioche, it's a Greek style sweet bread that's, that's usually served around Easter time. There is also a Christmas version of it that's shaped like a wreath. Today we're going to do it in the braid, um, in the braid form. So delicious. All of the flavors of the holiday season are in there. Lots of sweet apples and brown sugar and cinnamon. You guys are definitely going to love this. Let's go over the ingredients so we can get started. So first we're going to go over the dough ingredients. So for the starter we're going to need some warm milk, some active dry yeast, a little bit of all-purpose flour, and some granulated sugar. Then we're going to use the zest of an orange. These I'm using two oranges because they're small, but you use one large one. Then over here we have some bread flour. This is ground machlab or machlepi. I'll talk about this in a little bit. A little bit of salt and granulated sugar. I have two eggs here, some pure vanilla extract, and some more milk. So I'm going to do this all in my stand mixer just because it's so much easier. This is a very sticky dough. If you don't have a stand mixer, it's totally fine. Go ahead and do it by hand. It's going to need for 8 minutes, so if you're doing it by hand, take it all the way up to like 12 or 15. So first we're going to begin by making the starter. So in the mixer I have some lukewarm milk. I'm going to add to it. So I'm going to add the lukewarm milk to the mixer along with the active dried yeast, the little bit of sugar, and the all-purpose flour that are all part of the starter ingredients. And I'm just going to give it just a little mix, nothing special. Let it sit for about 10 minutes until the yeast is activated and you will know that it's activated once you see like a cloud form on top of the mixture or some bubbles. You're also going to smell it. So I'll show you what it looks like as soon as it's done. So while the yeast is proofing, let me tell you a little bit about the machlepi. Machlepi is also known as machlab and you can, uh, you can find this in your local Mediterranean or Middle Eastern specialty food market. If you cannot find it there, I will definitely share a link in the description box down below where you can get it on Amazon. It is definitely found there. I've bought it there many times. Basically, it is the pit of a sour cherry that's ground up to a very fine meal and it has a variety, it has different flavors to it. When you initially taste it, it's bitter, but in pastries, it's not bitter at all. It has almost some notes of almond and rose. It also has some more flor floral tones like like a little bit of cherry in there. It's very unique. You really cannot substitute it with anything else that will get this taste. But if you do want to, if you can't find it and you want to just leave it completely out, either add some more vanilla extract and maybe some more orange zest to your um, dough so that we could have a little more flavor. Or you can add a teaspoon of almond extract and maybe a few cardamom pods that are dry, that are finely ground. That would be a nice flavor combination as well. But if you can get it, Try to add it because it's a very unique flavor that tureki has. The only thing that I'm leaving out from my tureki re recipe is mastic gum because masticha and apples don't really go together, so I'm leaving that completely out. Now we're going to mix the wet ingredients together. So the milk here that I have that's going to go into the, the dough is lukewarm. You want to make sure that all the ingredients are lukewarm so that way it rises quickly. So to that, to the milk, I'm going to add my eggs. You don't want it to be hot because it will cook the eggs and then you're not going to have a good bread. And I'm also going to add the vanilla extract, pure vanilla extract always. I'm using two teaspoons. If you are not using the machlepi, you can use one teaspoon vanilla extract and one teaspoon almond extract. And I'm just going to whisk this together. That's it. Not, not too much. It's going to mix in the blender. It's going to mix in the mixer, not the blender. Then I'm going to get the zest of these two oranges. These are small, so I'm using two of them. I love all these flavors together, the apples and the cinnamon and the machlepi and orange go so well together. So I'm using two small ones, but if you have a big orange, just use one. And anytime you're zesting, stop at the white part. That white part is really bitter. You just want the shiny exterior. That is good. I'm just going to whisk all of the dry ingredients together. So this is what the yeast is going to look like once it's alive and proofed and good. It's going to be nice and puffy just like that. Now I'm just going to add all the ingredients to my mixing bowl. 
I'm even going to add the butter in there. I used to add it in the end, but I made this so many times and realized that if you add everything all together, not only is it easier, but it comes out tasting exactly the same. So two tablespoons of really soft butter. So I'm just going to knead this on low speed for about eight minutes, and I'll show you what it looks like as soon as it's done. So for the last minute of kneading, do it at a little bit higher speed, so that way it just kneads it really well. This, keep in mind, let me turn this off, keep in mind that this is a very sticky dough, so you do not worry about it. Do not try to add more flour to it. The end product is going to be perfect. I'm going to transfer it into a bowl, the same bowl that I had all the flour in. I'm just going to put a couple tablespoons of olive oil in here. This little handy tool is called a dough scraper, and I'll put it in the link down below as well as on my website. It's really inexpensive and it's really easy to get all of the dough out of the mixing bowl. So now I'm just going to turn this dough over a few times just so that way it comes together and it's coated in the oil. I'm going to cover it in plastic wrap and then I'm going to set it aside so it can rise and double in volume. I like to put this in a dryer so what I do is I put some towels in my, in my clothes dryer and I let it run for about 10 minutes turn it off and then put the bowl in there covered and let it rise. It usually takes about 45 minutes to an hour to be totally ready. I will show you what it looks like as soon as it's done. If you don't want to do the dryer trick, just set it aside in a draft free place and once it's nice and once it has risen really nicely, we can move on to the next step. So the dough is ready. This is a very dense dough so it is going to take a little bit longer to rise. Be patient and let it rise slowly as soon as it has doubled up in volume or at least three quarters of the way up. Then you know that it is ready. You're going to want to take off the plastic wrap. That dryer trick though really saves a lot of time. And I'm going to take it out of the bowl and cut it into two equal pieces. This makes two, um, two braids. Now, but let me tell you, over here I have two Gala apples. You can use Granny Smith apples. They will be a little bit more tart but use your favorite apples. Anything will work except for Red Delicious because Red Delicious will just get super mushy. So just peel them and then cut them into little pieces just like I have here. And then over here I have some brown sugar, granulated sugar, and a little bit of cinnamon. That's it. I never put nutmeg in my apple pie. I do not care for it. I do not like the flavor. If you like it, then you can go ahead and put some freshly grated nutmeg in there, but really, if you ask me, nutmeg is better in savory dishes. Keep it out of the sweet. But um, I'm going to go ahead and cut this into two pretty equal pieces. Nobody's measuring. Nobody's going to come and judge you. And then each piece gets cut into three pieces. I'll do the second one afterwards. And this dough is so nice and stretchy and easy to work with. You do not need a rolling pin to stretch this or roll this out. You can if you want to take one out, but really your fingers, just press it with your fingers and you can just stretch it out to make a nice surface to hold that delicious filling. Stretch it out as much as you can without tearing it. That is good. Before we move on, I'm just going to mix the sugar and the cinnamon together. Now I'm just going to take some of the cinnamon sugar and just sprinkle it all over each strip of dough that we're going to roll out. Be generous you guys. And then we're going to take some of these apples and put them on one side of the strip, fold over, tuck it in, and twist it a little bit, kind of tuck it like that so you can have a rope. Gently pick it up and move it to the side and keep doing this until all three are done from the first half of the dough. So now you're just going to put the three strips side by side and you're just going to braid them. So you can just take one strip and put it over like that, overlap them just to create a braid. And the top one, go backwards. Beautiful. Transfer it onto a baking tray that's lined with parchment paper. And then just go ahead and do the same thing with the next strip of dough. Show you what it looks like as soon as I'm done doing it. So we formed the braids, now cover them with plastic wrap and set them aside again for about 30 minutes or until they puff up and rise a little bit. You don't want them to rise too much, otherwise when you go ahead to bake them, they're kind of going to sag and like spread a little bit in the oven. You just want to let them rise enough that they're a little bit puffy, they're going to kind of look awake. And then when you press them, when you press uh, the dough with your finger, it's just going to hold the mark. It's just going to hold the indentation mark and I'll show you what that looks like as soon as they're done. Make sure that the oven is preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and that you have two egg yolks with a little bit of water 
mix, mix together so you can brush um, the egg wash on top. I'm gonna set them aside to rise and I'll show what they look like as soon as they're done. The braids rose for 30 minutes, they look perfect. All I did was brush them with some egg wash on top, just two egg yolks with two to four tablespoons of water will do it. That's gonna make them bake to a beautiful golden, like mahogany colored perfection. These are gonna go in the preheated oven, 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 minutes. After that, they're gonna come out and I'm gonna set them aside so they can cool completely for another 30 minutes before I cut into them and show you exactly how delicious these are gonna be. I'll show you what they look like as soon as they come out. So the apple braids baked in the oven for 35 minutes. They went over 30 minutes because they look like they still needed to get more color on them. Once they come out, let them cool completely at least 30, 35 minutes. Then you can go ahead, make some tea and serve these. If you're gonna make them ahead of time, you're gonna have to go ahead and bake these. If you're not making them for a dinner party and you just wanna have some in your, in your freezer, you can let these cool completely, wrap them in parchment paper and then in plastic wrap. And if you have freezer bags that, that these can fit in, you can go ahead and put them in freezer bags and store them in the freezer for up to one month and then take them out, let them thaw at room temperature and serve them. If you wanna make them extra decadent, go ahead and make a little cream cheese icing and drizzle it on top before you put it at the dinner table. All of those um, tips, tricks, and extra recipes will be in the ebook. Go on over to demetriusdishes.com to download this book and I will see you guys next time. Yes, us.